okay we're talking about civil unrest how to prepare and are you ready you know and I, and I and on the first video there part one I was talking about the uh, the crime level escalating in which it is it is already happening you know in the violence the violence you know you know uh, uh, people tend to uh, when they're pushed out of their comfort zone whether they lost their pension or whatever they tend to become irrational in, in, in the decisions they make. And it don't necessarily mean that they're, they're a bad person, it's just they snap, you know? Because you can be pushed to the breaking point. Any, any, any human being can be pushed to the breaking point. But but we want to guard against that too. But uh, let me read what the Ohio Police Department Safety Director said. Mitchell Brown said in September 08, from a law enforcement perspective, we expect that when there are difficult times, criminals get more bold during economic bad t during uh during better economic times okay they get more bold criminals get more bold during bad times than they do during the good times and uh we gonna have to watch out for that you know you need to be vigilant you need to be sober on them things and, and you need to watch out for that you know uh i suggest you keep your windows locked and your doors locked i suggest you also uh law abiding citizen i suggest that you keep your firearm well out of the hands of your children but but close enough that you could get to it in a hurry okay if you hear a window break that is a clear sign if that window breaks that is a clear sign for you to lock and load and get ready to unload on that person because i'm coming i'm coming by to tell you something we're living in some serious times we're not living in the times where you when they break in they come on in and you know well i i, I what do you need i'm not gonna sit there and ask him what he needs if he's breaking my window down you know you, you see what i'm saying I'm not, I'm not waiting to sit down at the table with that criminal and say, "Well, what do you need? Do you want you you know? Do you want you want to take the pots and pans? You want the food? You want to rape my kid? I'm not going through that diatribe with the idiot that I mean any idiot that would break down my door or that would uh, bust in my window or that I catch it in, in my garage trying to steal my stuff. I'm popping the cap in. It's just that simple. Because what he has done is he has said in his mind that I can do what I want to do with somebody else's stuff. And that's where it's getting in America, whether it's in the financial arena, whether it's the wall, you know, the white collared Wall Street crook saying, I'm taking your money and you ain't going to do nothing about it by taking your pension, or whether it may be the federal government saying, I'm going to tax you to death, you're going to pay for these bailouts whether you like it or not. They come to a point in time when American people are going to say, you know what, hell no, not anymore, it ain't going to happen. And that's where I'm at, you know. I'm not promoting violence, but I am promoting protection from the violent ones. You know, which comes from the top level all the way down to your common thug. Okay? So, uh, let me move on. And, and of course, y'all know about the regular Army troops, not National Guard, that are training over at Fort Stewart here, in, you know, in, that are training at Fort Stewart in Georgia. And, and you guys know that it, that it ain't to pick up cigarette butts along the interstate. That ain't what they're training for, okay? But look, the federal government already knows that, 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 that the uh, economic collapse is already well underway and that it will become. Just like uh, uh, Gerald Salente, and I find pronounced it right, but anyway, Trans Research, and he's been right 97% of the time, and, and uh, he's predicting that, you know, in early 09, that mm -hmm. there will be civil unrest, that there will be some pissed off people on the streets, okay? So we need to prepare for this, but let me move on with, with uh, uh, some of the stuff I've printed out, you know. All right, that, let's look at this. You know, I told you that, that the regular army are training in Georgia, and the, 28,000 additional troops by 2012. I believe it's before that. I believe they, I believe they already got it going on. They got foreign troops and, and everything because I've studied and studied and studied and not some lunatic site, but I've looked and found the research and done it for myself, and it's true that they're preparing for something. Okay, I can't tell you exactly what it is, but it ain't looking good what it is. But we need to get prepared to defend our homes and to defend our rights to keep and bear arms, defend our Constitution, the Bible, if you believe it, which I do. And, uh, you know, let me preface this. When I talk about civil unrest, are you prepared? I want to uh, run something by. I got uh, some emails on people that said that, uh, you know, Jesus didn't call us to violence and, and all that. But I, well, what about this one? Uh, uh, a man that won't take care of his house and his family is worse than an infidel, you know? And I just thought I'd throw that out there for those of you that wrote me and said that I didn't have the right to uh, kill anyone. No, I don't have the right to commit murder, but I do have the right. But I do have the right. I do have the right. To protect my home and use lethal force with a weapon to protect my wife and my kids and that's settled with that because if you go to exodus it tells you about a man that, that comes in and, and if you have if you have killed that person not murdered him but killed him in self-defense then god says you're a-okay in his eyes 
So there you go on that one. That's answered, and I'm moving on from that. But in any event, let's move on. Okay, based on the civil unrest that could occur in the USA, some of the training of the 30 Brigade will undergo consist of non-lethal force. This is a method founding fathers would have never considered. Listen, full-time regular army would be training in, in, in case they had to engage civilians in the USA. If there were no threat, there would be no troops training for civil unrest. And let me let me tell you that if there was no threat of this happening, that they wouldn't be training for it. Do you understand me? Okay? They wouldn't be doing it. And, you know, the, the, uh, the, the worrisome part, and I'm not worried about nothing. I'm not afraid to die. I'm ready to go. Okay? You understand what I'm saying? But... What what bothers me or is of grave concern to me is that you've got these guys that signed up for the military, they were young out of school, they wanted to watch this. Under good intentions, I believe, they started out and they went through boot camp and uh, just as I did in the 80s and then they probably went through AIT, Advanced Infantry Training, I know y'all care about that, and then they had an MOS and all that placed on them whether they were going to be on a grunt or a tank driver or a communications operator, whatever. Okay, and they did it with the with the with the fact that they would learn something, they could advance in something, and they could defend their country, you see. Okay, but they've been sent to Iraq and they've been had these patches put on them with dope in them and all that that they've done and they, and they took all these inoculations and shots and, and they've been exposed to an environment of, of nothing but violence, 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 violence. Okay? Alright, and then they, they come back to America, they don't unwind them as they should per se. There's probably a better term than that. Or, uh, but they then they hire them in law enforcement and all that. And, they, and, and man, all they know is, is, buddy, I'm over there and I'm killing this and killing that. And I think I can come over here and do it. That ain't the way you can do it, though. But they've done that on purpose, see, because they know they'll shoot at me and you because they just come out of the war zone. And I'm not talking about all of them. I'm talking about. But there's, there is a lot of them that have come back and are in the law enforcement agencies and, and, and different areas, and they will shoot you, okay? They are trigger happy. So you need to be on the lookout for that, and you need to understand, you know? It's kind of like uh, Mr. Wilson said, you know, he got stopped, uh, he got stopped over in uh, Idaho, and uh, uh, he was running 45 and, uh, uh, on a four-lane, and, uh, <laughs> and uh, the, guy, the guy pulled him over, and he stayed in the back of his car and had his hand on his pistol, and uh, Mr. Wilson finally asked him, said, uh, he wouldn't ever come up to the car yet like Kurt was some kind of weirdo. And he, <laughs> Kurt said he finally asked him, sir, do you want me to throw the license back there to you or throw them on the ground? I mean, the guy was freaked out like he was some kind of maniac, you know. And I know there have been officers shot. I'm not I'm not saying that they shouldn't be wise and defend themselves. Uh, but at the same time, I mean, you know, a stigma has been brought out that all of us Americans are the evil one and that the police state and the federal government's the only people with any sense. You know, and that we're the idiots. But, uh, when, uh, obviously, if you're watching this video and have been, uh, majority of you are on the other side of that coin just like I am, and we think that they're the idiots, that we're the ones that knows what's going on because we're on the outside looking in. We're the ones that's been raped and, and pillaged to death and, and, and about tired of it. But having said that, I don't want to get on to that. Back to the, uh, uh, back to the documents that I've obtained, and, and I think that you'll find it be very interesting to help you. Uh, we're gonna have to come up to part two in a, here in a minute because I see I'm running out of time. But, but now, uh, over history, wars have been fought to better society by taking what another society has. The French Revolution was fought to better the lower class. They fought and took control of France because the upper class had all the food and privileges. This is similar to what could take place in the USA. The middle class could rebel because the U.S. government and their elected officials are not doing what their sworn oath says they should do. I'm telling you right now, there's a lot of middle class folks that are upset. What they're trying to do is take, that. There's, I'm telling you, they're trying to take the middle class away and either you're going to be on the lower scale or you're going to be on the yacht scale. You're going to own a yacht, condos, all that, big wheels, caviar, champagne, or you're going to struggle to buy food that's decent enough to eat that won't kill you and poison you. It's going to be, there ain't going to be no in-between, I'm telling you right now. Part three, coming up, don't go away.